At first sight, ergonomic keyboards look funny. They have weird shapes, strange keys in odd places, and even moving parts. But all those quirks have reason to exist. There's an ergonomic benefit behind them. Although, if you ask me, they look like they were designed for aliens. Whoa! Let's go, baby! Hyperspace engage! That was a trip. Hello Digmates, I'm Dominique, and in today's video, we'll dive deeply into what makes a keyboard ergonomic. First, the split design. We've been over this more than once, but we can't stress it enough. A split design lets you align your wrists with your forearms, pushing your elbows slightly outward, and your shoulders back, and helping you keep your back straight. Some keyboards have a fixed split layout that you can't adjust, like the Kinesis Advantage, or this Logitech, or mechanical keyboards with an Alice layout. But fully split models are more ergonomic since you can move them around and place them precisely to your preference. If you want to learn how to position your split keyboard, check out this other video. Number two, tenting. On a regular keyboard, you type with your palms facing down which can lead to pain in your wrists and forearms. To prevent this, some keyboards include tenting. It's basically a fancy word to explain the ability of a keyboard to tilt into a tent-like shape. These allow you to keep your hands in a more natural position while typing or gaming, similar to when you grab a ball. Anyway, there are a lot of keyboard designs with a fixed tenting position, like this Logitech Ergo K860, and others that allow multiple angles, like the Digma Defy, the Digma Rays, or the Moonlander. Although, in some cases, you need to equip them with an accessory. Keyboards with tenting tend to be a bit more expensive and difficult to find. That's why many users get creative and find DIY solutions to tent their split keyboards, like our Digmates did with the Rays before we launched its tenting kit. You can learn more about tenting and its benefits in these other videos. Number three, negative tilt. Many conventional keyboards include tiny legs at the bottom so they could tilt them. Some people believe it's more ergonomic, but it's clearly the opposite. If your keyboard has a positive tilt, you'll suffer the consequences of wrist extension. You want your wrists to be at a neutral angle, and that's where a negative tilt comes in handy. But typing this way feels weird. The Digma Defy, for example, has two reverse tilting angles to help you find the perfect posture. Traditionally, the keys on a keyboard have been organized in staggered rows. This design was inherited from typewriters. The keys were placed this way to prevent the machine from jamming, but it's not ergonomic. Placing the keys in columns instead of rows helps reduce finger travel and feels more natural because you're doing this instead of this. Keyboards with a columnar layout include the Keyboardio Model 100, the Moonlander, the Digma Defy, and the Kinesis Advantage, which takes me to the next ergonomic feature. Number five, the concave key well. A concave key well further reduces the travel distance of your fingers and makes the thumb cluster easier to reach. But it comes with its own set of caveats. For example, they're almost impossible to manufacture with hot swappable sockets. And you know how we love trying new switches or even lubing them. Also, it makes the keyboard much bulkier. Examples of these keyboards are the Kinesis Advantage 2 and 360, the Glove 80, and the Dactyle Maniform. Thumb keys. Another easy way to reduce finger travel is to give your thumbs more things to do. Instead of a single space bar, many ergonomic keyboards have multiple keys for the thumbs to use. There are all kinds of designs, from clusters of rectangular keys to custom keycaps beautifully arranged in curves that follow the natural arch of your thumb. Thumb keys can be used for functions that are usually far to reach, like enter, backspace, or shift. But for that to happen, the keyboard has to be customizable, which takes me to one last feature. 
easily programmable. Being programmable doesn't make a keyboard ergonomic, but it's a critical ergonomic feature. A programmable keyboard lets you personalize your layout and have multiple custom layers. If you combine that with thumb keys, you can have your symbols, shortcuts, and macros closer to your fingers, avoiding unnecessary finger stretches and contortions. Bonus track, wireless. From an ergonomic standpoint, this is an exciting feature. Ooh. Wireless. A wireless keyboard helps keep the desk cleaner and gives you more freedom to position the keyboard. Without wires, you could attach the keyboard's halves to the arms of the chair, to a special tray, or even strap them to your legs. Some keyboards like the Moonlander and the Digma Defy even have screw mounts so you can bolt it into anything you can imagine. The more of these features you have, the more ergonomic a keyboard becomes. However, it also depends on how well each feature is implemented and adapted to your personal needs and preferences. Not all tenting or thumb cluster solutions are equally comfortable. Keep in mind that there is a learning curve when using ergonomic keyboards. Some of the features need getting used to, so you might not want to have them all at the same time in your first ergonomic keyboard. You might get frustrated when trying to learn how to use it. If that's your case, we recommend watching this other video. It'll help you choose the keyboard that suits you best. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below, on our subreddit, on our Discord server, or you can even send us a homing pigeon. The links are in the description below, except for the bird. You'll have to train it to do that. I hope this video was helpful and see you in the next one. Whoa, let's go baby. Hyperspace engage. <laughs> Grab a ball. <laughs> Why did you do that?